And I'd like to introduce you to the gold spotted oak borer shown here. This is a new pest that has established itself in the Cleveland National Forest. It is native to Arizona, Mexico, and northern Guatemala, and last week I was in Mexico looking for natural enemies of this insect. It's a very attractive beetle, and it lays its eggs on the bark of the oak trees, and then the larvae of those beetles bore into the trees. And as those larvae feed in the tree, they kill it, essentially by girdling or ring barking the tree because they cause so much damage. And you can see the beetle is actually kind of small when you compare it to the size of a penny. So this insect kills these massive oak trees in the Cleveland just through sheer numbers. The trees can't handle being fed on by so many beetles. And this is what we're seeing. Since 2002, over 25,000 magnificent oak trees have been killed in the Cleveland National Forest by the gold-spotted oak borer. It has now spread over 5,000 square kilometers, impossible to control with insecticides. Our only hope at managing this insect now will be through some type of biological control agent. So what are the impacts of this? Well, obviously, the environmental impacts are immense. Oaks are a keystone tree species in Southern California, and a lot of animals depend on these trees, which are dying in large numbers. Squirrels, you know, you've probably seen these uh, acorn caching uh, woodpeckers that drill the holes and stuff them full of, of um, um, acorns. There are species of toad that only live in areas with these oaks because they eat the ants that only live on those oak trees. When those oak trees go, there's going to be no ants. Food for the toad will decrease. Little mice need the acorns to get through the, ye get through the year, especially the winter. And of course, you know, predatory birds feed on the mice. And then, of course, we have things like deer, which also use not only the oak forest as habitat, but they will also feed on the acorns over winter as well. So it's not too difficult to, I guess, envision the potential ecosystem collapse that's going to happen if we can't control this beetle. And we still lose all these oak trees. Now, the other thing that you've probably noticed is, wow, these trees are quite big. Yeah, some of them are over 100 years old, maybe 150 years old. There's more than 25,000 of them out there in the forest now. Summer's coming up. We have wicked problems with wildfires. So not only are we looking at habitat destruction for the animals, we're also looking at a huge wildfire risk now because of the fuel load that's building in these forests because of this beetle. So how do we go about finding natural enemies of the gold-spotted oak borer? Well, to do that, we go to the countries where the insect is native. Mexico, I was there last week looking for natural enemies of gold-spotted oak borer. We've been to Arizona, to the oak forest there, to look for the insect as well and its natural enemies. So the way we look for the beetles, because they're so rare in these countries, we can't find them. They're so well controlled often by the natural enemies, it's worse than looking for a needle in a haystack. So we have to trick them. Tell them to come to us, and we do that in a couple of ways. We ring bark or girdle trees to stress them out, and the beetles go, oh, this is great. Dying oak tree, we're going to attack that in large numbers. And when they do that, the natural enemies follow them. And we know that if we go back to those exact trees, because we girdled them, we know exactly where they are, we have the GPS coordinates, we can come back next year and start shaving away the bark, looking for the natural enemies that are attacking the larvae of the gold-spotted oak borer. That's what I'm showing you here. This is Tom Coleman with the U.S. Forest Service over here in San Bernardino. We're in uh, Arizona here, ring barking trees, which we had permission to do. <laughs> and the other thing we do is we go into areas where people have been cutting firewood in these areas. This was quite common in Mexico, and we look for the stumps. And we peel back the stumps, and the gold-spotted oak borer attacks them. And here I am, this was just last week, finding the first two of the gold-spotted oak borers in Mexico for our study. So very excited about that. And have we found natural enemies? Yes, we have. We have found two species of parasitoid which attack the larvae. Shown up here is Calistoma elongata. This was a new species of parasite when we found it attacking gold-spotted oak borer. It had never been described or seen before. So now we have that. This one here with the red belly, Atonocolis, we have looked at that. And just in Mexico last week, we found something very unusual. Can you see these pearls, these little bubbles, growing on the larvae of the gold-spotted oak borer here, and a few of them stuck on the adult that's coming out of the tree? This appears to be a species of parasitic mite. It makes these little cysts that it attaches to the host, and it lives inside those cysts and feeds through them and sucks the juice out of their insect host. 
What impact do all these things have? We don't know. They've never been studied before. Some of them don't even have names. So we know nothing about the biology, ecology, or impact of these species. That's why we have graduate students in my lab working on these kinds of things. <laughs> Perhaps the most important thing to remember from this is don't move firewood around. Right now, you can go into the Cleveland National Forest where gold-spotted oak borer is killing all those trees and people are cutting them down. They're selling them for firewood. $100 a pickup truck. There's no regulation to say you can't move it from one place to another. You could buy it in San Diego and drive it all the way to San Luis Obispo. And that's how gold-spotted oak borer is now jumping. We see these budding satellite populations that are showing up many miles from the area of original infestation. $100, and away it goes. So if you see, I don't want to, I don't want to take your photo and see you doing this. 